What's up? What's up? What's up? Nikki, Aletta, Marcia, y'all jump, jumping on in here tonight. Brother Jose, PM Beauty. Good evening, good evening. Sunday night check-in. It's been a minute, I know. I've, I've been um, missing in action, if you will. So hope all is well. Listen, I tried to jump on tonight. I was like, it's late. Good evening, Coach Rozzy. It's late, but I'm jumping on. There's my sister, Angel Butler. Come on in, come on in. I see you, Freddie. Hey, Anthony. Good evening, Freddie. How are you? Hey, Chelsea, how are you? Okay, I don't have my eye. Love you, too. Uh, I don't have my iPad again tonight. I keep letting it die. And so... Me and this phone don't always get along. How are you doing, Minister Boyd? How are you doing? Miss New You, Christine, good to see you, good to see you, good to see you. Sunday night check-in, what's going on with you? It's been, a, it's been a minute. I think I went live on a Friday, maybe Friday and like about a week ago. Uh, I hate to hear that, that you had a bad week, a rough week, Chelsea, but glad to see that you are here and hopefully the Lord says something that will give you encouragement. Hey, Remesia. So congratulations, Freddie. Uh, F. Nunes 3000 is our younger cousin. He's saying he received his three degrees in the mail, business, general studies, and arts. Congratulations, Freddie. We are proud of you. We were actually in El Paso last week, and we were with Aunt Mary, Freddie. And so we all talked about you and talked about how um, proud we are. She mentioned that you had finished school, so we are proud of you. Good evening, Jazz and Woodstock. Yes, Miss New You. I have missed you all, too. Um, Fab 28. Hey, how's it going? I have missed you all too. And so this is Sunday night check-in for those who don't know. I, it, it is something we used to do every Sunday, but I have kind of been MIA lately. And so I wanted to hop on tonight. Really just, I don't think I have a profound word tonight. I think if the Lord says something, he says something. Um, but, um, um, just wanted to get on to let you know that, hey, I miss you all. I'm thinking about you all. Um, okay, Freddie, we are, we are cheering you on for your next steps. And so, um, I feel like a lot has happened since we last, uh, jumped on here together. And, um, I don't even know where to start, but I've been to El Paso since I've seen you all as, I just feel like a lot of stuff has happened. Um, so I'm glad to jump on tonight to say hello. Um, since the last time I hopped on on a Friday night following, um, the Wednesday night Bible study that I was a part of at my home church. Hey, Andrea, how are you? Um, the Lord does always say something on Sunday night check-in. Uh, we will keep your mom lifted in prayer, Brother Jose. Uh, we will continue to pray for complete and total healing and restoration in her body. Uh, from the crown of her head to the sole of, soles of her feet, we pray that God heals her completely, nothing broken, nothing missing. Uh, I pray that God will give you um, faith. God has not given you the spirit of fear. So my prayer for you is that you are able to stand uh, in the faith that God has given to us and that the Lord will sustain you while you're believing for your mom's healing to be complete. I know that can be uh, taxing emotionally. It can be taxing physically if you're helping take care of her. And so we are praying, as the old church used to say, your strength in the Lord. We're praying for you and we're praying for her that God will bring her completely through healing on this side. I often say that when I'm praying for people because, you know, you can be healed on earth or healed in heaven. And so when I pray, I am specific in my prayer that the Lord will heal on this side. And so I feel like a lot has happened. Um, 
since yes it is done we pray in agreement because where two touch and agree on anything it shall be done so you have all this agreement in the comments and we are also agreeing agreeing for you that the lord will encourage you and strengthen your heart and mind and that you will remember that god has not given you the spirit of fear but he has given you power love and a sound mind and so i pray that with long life he will satisfy your mother and that doesn't matter if she's already older he can still do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or think so we are in agreement um with prayer for you uh i i feel like a lot has happened and so um most of you are the regulars of sunday night check-in we have a few new people and so i don't i don't know god is doing some new things so we don't quite know where all god is taking us but i will say um, that when the Lord allowed me to participate in Bible study, that the way the Holy Spirit spoke through me, and I, I thank everyone for telling me, uh, giving me accolades, but I do understand that if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, where would I be? And so with the Holy Spirit speaking through me on that Wednesday night, I ask you to pray with me um, just about the things that God wants to do to expand and enlarge our territories. And I say our territories because when we are interconnected one with another, God doesn't generally just enlarge one person's territory. And so I'm praying that God enlarges your territory. God is enlarging mine. Um, I've been prophesying some things um, to you all that are coming to pass in my own life. And that that is, a, 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 um, how do I say, that is God really expressing his love uh, to me as well. And so for the last few months, I see a lot of people coming on that I haven't seen in a long time. Rolanda, Terry, um, hey, Leslie, Dr. Cecilia, hey, and a lot of people that are the regulars and even the new people, welcome, welcome, welcome. I believe it was around, um, yes, we just all have to be ready, Dr. Cecilia. We all have to be ready. And I don't know how many of you all participated. Remember last year, we prayed 10 days, that prayer of Jabez, that the Lord would enlarge our territory. And so God is doing uh, exactly that. God is has fidelity to his word. He is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he should repent, which means uh, that he does not change his mind. He does not change his mind. He is not like we are. Sometimes we may think well of a person or we may say we want to do something with the person, but we change our mind. Well, God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of a man that he should repent. In that context, the Bible is referring to that God has not changed his mind about you. But I want to underscore that a few months ago, there are certain prophetic words that I began to speak. And I know we hear a lot of prophetic words going on in the atmosphere, and it can seem like we're being inundated with prophecy. And uh, for those of you who know me, I definitely never elevate the prophetic word over the written logos word of God. Any prophetic word that you receive should also be able to be in alignment with the logos, the written word of God. So we don't come out prophesying or giving words that are not in agreement with God's word because that word is sure that word will stand. God bless you, Nicole. Hey, Miss Kena Lene. And so the Lord began saying some things to me that I want to bring to your remembrance. But for those of you who are new, I want to speak those words in your hearing because the Bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And I want you to hear that faith cometh by hearing and hearing. And so it is not enough just to hear, but it is in the hearing, the ing, in the continuously putting yourself in a position to hear from God increases your faith. So whether you are, let's put that in practical terms before I give, remind you all of the prophetic words that God has spoken. I want to put that in practical terms because we do have a lot of people on here who are new. When the Bible says hearing, that is continuous, I-N-G. So your faith does not increase on the old word you hear. Your faith increases 
on the current word you are hearing, I-N-G. And so the Bible tells us in the book of Romans uh, chapter 12, I believe verse three or so that we have, and I'm not sure if it's verse three or four, but that we have been given a measure of faith, which means that everyone, and I'm going to open up my iPad so I can tell you for sure, because uh, I can't believe that that escaped me. Um, but that we all have been given a measure of faith, but that measure of faith is to increase over time. And that is what the Bible talks about in Romans 10, 17, uh, that faith, now faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But I'm running to the book of Romans chapter 12, right quick. Um, yes, it is chapter 12, verse three, uh, that he says uh, in the, in the last clause of that, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. So every man who is a believer in Jesus Christ has been given the measure of faith. Much like in your physical body, when we all were born, I believe we have about 206 bones. We all have the same amount of bones in our body, yet the development of our bones into muscle depends on us exercising them. I'm going to say that again. The development of the, the same amount of bones, you have 206, I have 206, or we had it when we were born, um, if my memory serves me correctly. Uh, the bones, we all are given the same amount, but the structure or the development of those bones is contingent on us working out and developing. And so when the Bible says we have all been given the measure of faith, we have all been allotted by God the measure of faith. But in order to exercise it or grow or develop it, you have to put yourself in a position to constantly be hearing the word of God. And so as simple as if you go to church, will you hear the word preached and your faith could grow? Or as simple as even prophetic words will increase your faith. You will hear the word of God and it will increase your faith. Even though if you turn on your Bible app and simply let the word of God play in your hearing, it will increase your faith. Now faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so I wanted to establish that because sometimes we all receive uh, prophetic words and the problem is we get prophetic words and then we feel like they have not yet come to pass. And I'm trying not to hit a, to speak to a few more people before I hit a full stride here. Hey, Katandra. Hey, a realist. Hey, walk away. Renee, Sharif. Um, I think I saw Elder Christopher Carroll. Um, I am done. Uh, Princess Amanda, uh, Minister Sharon, uh, Vanessa, all of you all. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, and I wanted to remind, uh, for those of you who just came on, I wanted to remind everyone of a prophet, the prophetic words that God began to speak to us, not just to me, but to us collectively a few months ago. But I wanted to establish that sometimes the prophetic words do not come into realization or manifestation. And I'm careful in using the word manifestation because when I use the word manifestation, I'm meaning it in the context of God's word coming to pass. I do not mean it in the context of me thinking thoughts and me trying to manifest something outside of the power of God. Me trying to manifest something or create something outside the power of God is actually a form of witchcraft. I don't have time to go in that tonight. We'll have to talk about that on another night. But anytime you try to tap in a power, tap into a power that is not the power of God, and you try to use a power that is not his power, the Holy Spirit, you are tapping into a spiritual realm. Even if it's something that you're tapping into with your mind, you are now replacing your God's power with your power. And anytime you try to replace your power, your ability, over God's power and his ability, you stand in a position of saying, I can do this without God. You're saying, all I have to do is think about it long enough and I have the ability to bring it into 
manifestation. When I use the word manifestation, I am saying that I am putting my faith in alignment with the word of God. And because I believe the word of God is true, because I believe the word of God, not just the word of God is true, but that the word of God is truth. We live in a day and time where we use terminologies like my truth and your truth. Well, I want you to know that your truth and my truth are lesser in comparison to the truth. My truth and your truth are subject to change. They change uh, when we get more information. They change when we learn or expose to something differently. But the word of God, the Bible, is the truth and it does not change. It does not shift. It does not conform. It does not bow. It stands complete and whole on its own. The word of God. So when I talk to you about prophetic words and the word of God being spoken over your life, yes, the Bible says in the book of Hebrews that it is quick, that it is powerful, which means that it is alive. That's what, let me, let me say that. Let's say, let's, thank you, Miss Nicole. Let me, let me, let me reiterate what that alive means. The, the Bible is not a book. I want you to understand the Bible is not a book. We read from a book, but the Bible in and of itself is the word. And the Bible tells us in John chapter one, verse one. I, I, now I feel like I need to go back to some very simplistic basics because we have new audience here and we want everybody to go and grow all at the same time. It doesn't matter when you join. We are no respect of person here because God is no respect of person. So we don't want somebody to feel like we're talking over their head or that we're trying to... Uh, belittle them. We want to make the word of God plain and palatable for everyone to eat the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ. So the teaching anointing comes so that we can that we can grow in what the Bible says, grow in grace, Second Peter 3 and 18, that we can grow also in the knowledge of God. And so I want to give the word and I want to remind some of you what the prophetic words were, but I want to tell some of you what the prophetic's words were for the first time, you may just hear this because I also want you to attach your faith and bring it into fruition or manifestation in your own life. This is not, again, manifesting. This is not the concept of manifesting. This is me standing on the principles of God. This is me standing, believing in the word of God and exercising and extending my faith and attaching my faith to the word of God and watching God manifest the things that he had for me. We don't stand in the place and position of God. When I try to manifest something on my own, I'm actually usurping God's authority. I'm actually standing in a position that only belongs to him. And he said, have no other God before me. And that God even could be yourself. It could be your own mind. It could be your own intellect. It could be your own way of doing things. But in order for God to bring into manifestations his promises, which the Bible assures, us are yes and amen. God's promises are yes and amen in him, which means yes and amen. It's, it's, it's critical that we say that. Amen in him and yes in him. That means his promises are yes in Christ and amen in Christ, which means if you are outside of Christ, then the promises are not guaranteed. It is only in Christ that the promises of God are yes and amen. I know I said a lot. I feel like I need to slow down and I feel y'all pushing me tonight. I thought I was going to just jump on and say, what's up on a Sunday night check-in, but I, I, I feel y'all pushing me tonight and I feel your hunger. And that's one thing that when hunger shows up, hunger pulls on the anointing or the gifting. And sometimes some of you know me from various places now. Our, 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 our tribe, if you will, is growing. Our community, that's the right word. Our community is growing. And so some of you may have taken some of my classes. Some of you may know me from church. Some of you may know me from Sunday night check-in. Some of you have may have just gotten to, uh, to be introduced to me last week and start following me. But whatever it is, God wants to bring us all up together. And if you're on here tonight, 
there is a word for you. If you logged on here tonight, there is a word. This video will be posted on my YouTube page. Once we finish, uh, for whatever reason, they keep flagging my account saying that I have music playing in the background, even though I don't. So as soon as I now finish these, I have to take them down and just transport them to YouTube. So if you need to go back and study something that I said or hear it again, I want you to do so so that you can allow the faith Faith that cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God to begin to cause your faith to increase. So Romans 12 and 3 says that we've all been given the measure of faith, much like we all were given the same amount of bones. They say that we have 206 bones. However, the development of those bones, whether they are muscular, whether you have a six pack, whether you can show your abs, all of those things are dependent or contingent upon you putting in the time to do the work to development for you to exercise them. So the same way you have to exercise your physical body, we have to exercise our faith because we walk by faith, the Bible says, and not by sight. As a believer, you and I, a believer, a follower of Jesus Christ, we walk by faith and not by sight. Meaning whatever I am set out to do, I am doing it by faith and not by what I see. The, the, the end or the conclusion of the matter is not determined by my external circumstances. It is determined by the level of faith that I want to extend and that I want to walk in. God is no respecter of persons, but he does respect his principles. So when you operate in the principle of faith, you will have every promise that he has extended to you because you are operating, thank you, Holy Spirit, in the currency of the kingdom. Faith is the medium of exchange in the kingdom. Much like if you want to go and purchase a new purse, uh, how much money you have determines the level of purse you buy. If you have money on one level, you may choose to buy a particular brand. And I'm not going to throw out a store or, or anything like that. But if you have money on another level, it, it moves up. So if you're going to buy a $3,000 bag or a $5,000 bag, it is all depends on your uh, your currency, the money that you possess. Well, that's the same in the kingdom is that it depends on your faith. But the thing about the kingdom is we don't compare it to money as in uh, someone had a little money and some had a lot of money. No, the Bible says, the Bible says that if you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, that you can speak to this mountain and you can tell this mountain to be moved. So you don't even need a whole lot of faith. You just need faith. You just need faith. You're, you just need faith. You just need to develop your faith. Practice a lifestyle of faith. Practice being obedient by faith. Listen, Hebrews 11 and 6 says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. I didn't know I was going to talk about faith this much, but I needed to tell, I needed to talk to somebody because even ab above what you hear from me or even outside of what you hear from me, whatever you're hearing, even at your church or even at whatever your, whoever your favorite preacher or teacher is, you still need faith to attain the promises of God. Hebrews 11 and 6 says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Without faith. It didn't say without living right, uh, without living holy, without none of these things, without faith. But I believe the reason that we cannot please God without faith is because everything about Christianity hinges on faith. There is nothing that I can do in the kingdom that does not require faith. Every time I obey God, I have to extend faith. I'm doing it by faith. I may start off on one level, but once I have graduated to another level, I, I, I now he can trust me with a little more and he may give me something larger to step out on. He may tell me something small to build my faith muscles, but everything God asks of me, it requires faith. It requires faith 
to serve him. It requires faith to be obedient to his will. It, it requires faith to get on here and to speak to you and to know that I'm going to hear him as I'm flowing because this is not a sermon that I prepared. I get on Sunday night check-in and we just flow under the unction of the Holy Spirit. And I don't know if anyone, if everyone is familiar with that terminology because that's kind of churchy. So we are just led by the Holy Spirit. And so I have to have faith in order to follow wherever the Holy spirit is taking me. I have to have faith to say, I heard God. God is telling me to say this to his people. And I now have to have faith to speak it. And the thing about that is I have faith enough to speak it, but it is not my responsibility to make it come to pass. Somebody needs to hear that. Some of you have not stepped out to do what God has called you to do or even speak sometimes when God told you to speak, whether it's a prophetic word, whether it's uh, just you hear a voice say, you know, this lady over here, you see her in the grocery store and, and you hear a voice and you have not yet matured in the faith enough to identify the Holy Spirit every time that he is talking to you. And so you hear this voice say, um, that lady needs a hug. Go over there and give her a hug. And you now wrestle within yourself saying, well, wait a minute, I don't even know her. Why would would I do that? Yet it is about training you on faith to faith, glory to glory, being obedient from faith to faith to glory to glory on each level. Once you have, uh, have passed the test, if you will, on one level, you go to the next. So, so we have to bring faith into our everyday lives. We have to bring it out of the spooky realm, out of the supernatural realm, even though it is supernatural, but we have to bring it into a place in our life that we understand that everything we do, we do it by faith. So by faith, I sat down tonight, knowing that whoever would get on, that it was ordained from the foundation of the world, that you and I would be in this space, in this digital space, coming together and that the Lord was going to speak to us. I didn't have an agenda. I didn't have, uh, I just came as a vessel trusting God that when I opened up my mouth, what would come out of my mouth would be the very oracles of heaven that will pierce the heart and the soul of whomever he sent to hear this word tonight. I want to say one more thing about faith before we go. And I want to read this scripture to you. It's Hebrews uh, 4 and 2. And I have some of my faith people on here. So I know they already um, know where I'm going with this. But I want to really read this one to you uh, because I want to make sure I don't leave a word out. It says, for unto us was the gospel preached. Unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. So when we look at this, there are two groups that receive the gospel preached. Unto us, it was preached, and unto them. It really doesn't matter who them is. It's just uh, we want to underscore that this is two different groups of people. Unto us, the gospel was preached, and unto them, the gospel was preached. So what we know is that both groups or both parties receive the same message. They both receive the message of the gospel or the good news, which means they both receive the good news of Jesus Christ. And I thank you, Holy Spirit. We're going to go back and lay a foundation of the word of God in, in a moment before we go to the prophetic word. But I thank the Holy Spirit for reminding me um, that I moved from that point earlier. So for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. Two sets of people heard the same word. We're going to break this down. That's like us all going to the same church, but yet we're all hearing the same word, but it's a difference. But the word preached did not profit them. I want you to hear this, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. I'm going to read it to you in a different translation. Excuse me so that you can get it. For this good news that God has prepared uh, this rest has been announced to us just as it was announced to them. But it did them no good because they didn't 
share the faith of those who listen to God. Going back to the King James, it says it did not profit them not being mixed with faith. So one group there was profitable. The word was profitable to them. The other group, it was not profitable unto them. The difference was their faith. It's not enough just to hear the word if you're not going to mix the word with faith. The Bible says in the book of James that we're not to be, uh, we are to be doers of the word and not hearers only. And really, James also tells us that faith without works is dead being alone. Which, what that really means is, no, your works do not get you faith. But if you have faith, it produces works. I'm going to say that again. Your works do not uh, result in faith. But if you have faith, faith produces works. Faith says there is a subsequent, a subsequent action. I don't know why I'm stammering over my words that accompanies what I believe. If I have faith, then there is an action that validates the authenticity of what I say I believe. My faith, that's why Jesus would say that when G, the, the, in the Gospels, uh, in, cha in Mark chapter 4, there were four friends who carried their friend who was sick to a house where Jesus was preaching. And they could not get inside of the house. You can read it for yourself. Um, and listen, I like to make sure I'm giving everybody, because when I'm flowing fast sometimes, it's Mark chapter 2. The Holy Spirit said, you said four, but it's two. But it's actually Mark chapter two, uh, where four friends carry their friend to the house where Jesus is preaching. But the house is filled and they cannot get their friend who is paralyzed and they are carrying him on a bed. They are carrying dead weight, if you will. And they are carrying him to Jesus so that Jesus might heal him. When they could not get in the door, they climbed up the side of the wall of the house and they tore open the roof of the house and they dropped their friend down in the middle of the of of, of the, the house right at Jesus's feet and the Bible says when he saw their faith so that seems like an oxymoron because faith is not something tangible you can see but what Jesus saw was their actions their actions proved they believed if they could just get their friend in the presence of Jesus, that he would be healed. And therefore, even though there was opposition because the house was filled and they could not get him in through the front door, they said, because we believe if we get him in the presence, it doesn't matter how we get him there. So we're for going to carry this dead weight. You have to think about what it means to carry someone who's paralyzed. We're carrying this dead weight on a cot, if you will, and we're carrying it up the side of the wall and now we're going to go a step further we're going to open up this roof we're not asking for permission think about this we're tearing up somebody else's house we're tearing up something that somebody else built because what is more important to us than this structure is that our friend is healed and because we believe that the person that can heal him is inside the house no matter what it takes to get him there we're going to do it and when they dropped him in the house Jesus said the Bible says when he saw their faith so your actions prove whether or not you have faith it's not just in your heart do you believe. Faith without works is dead. Being alone really means that your works are the proof that you had faith. Not that your works produce faith, but that your faith produces works. And now when people see your works, they now testify of the goodness of God. They now, because they see your works, they now see what you are doing. It is proof of your faith, but that is actually not pointing them to you. It is now pointing them back to God. I didn't know we were going to talk about faith like this tonight, but somebody needed to be reminded that we walk by faith and not by sight. That no matter what is going on around you, 
no matter what is going on in this world, no matter what is going on in the culture, no matter what is going on in the climate around us, that we walk by faith and not by sight. And when we walk by faith and not by sight, we are now led by the spirit of God and it will get us to our destination despite what's going on around us. And your obedience is a sign that you have faith. Your obedience to the word of God, your obedience to, to spend time with God, and I feel the power of the Holy Spirit. And I was trying not to be real churchy tonight because I know I have a whole lot of new people on here and I don't know if they're accustomed to uh, the fire that sometimes comes on Sunday night check-in. But somebody on here tonight, I know the Lord has revealed to you a deeper level of what it looks like to have faith. I'm going to say this to you. At the beginning of 2020, um, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. God spoke to me through the Holy Spirit and said that he wanted me to begin to demystify some of the kingdom principles. Uh, I grew up in a Pentecostal persuasion, so I can get in here and I can go on fire. But I really want to take um, some of what has seemed so mystical and so, uh, so, I don't want to say spiritual because, but sometimes we have spiritualized things that are not really the Holy Spirit and we have not given sound teaching that that's what's going to gird people up and going to build their foundation. And if you have a foundation of truth, listen to me, everything that, that God does is surrounded around truth. His word is truth. The Holy Spirit is called the spirit of truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one cometh to the Father except they come by me. If you come to God absence, uh, absent of truth, you are not fully going to get what you are trying to get from God because God resides in truth. I'm, somebody needs to catch that. Not God resides in your truth and my truth and the culture's truth and what society says is true. God, God's word is forever settled in heaven. God's word is truth. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. And Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except they come by him. I want to go back a little bit to John chapter one and verse one. The Bible says in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. I want you to hear that. Um, and I'm looking up another scripture as I'm saying that, that I'm, that I want to quote, I want to give you I don't know if some of my regulars can put these scriptures in the comments so people can get them, but this will be on, um, on YouTube as soon as we finish. Um, John one and one again, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word was God. I want you to hear that. In the beginning was the word. The only other place in scripture that we hear in the beginning is in Genesis 1 and 1 when he says, uh, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So John 1 and 1 now says, in the beginning was the word, the word, the word. The word was there in the beginning. When God created the heavens and the earth, the world, the word was there in the beginning. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. So God created the heavens and the earth. It's almost underscoring what he just said. It's almost uh, underscoring that, first of all, in the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the word was there. But now it's saying in the beginning was the word. 
the word was with God. So now it's not just telling you that in the beginning was the word, but now it's saying the word was with God in the beginning. And we have to understand that scripture is saying in the beginning, not at the beginning. When the world began was not God's beginning. It was just the beginning of the world. Because if, if it had been God's beginning, it would have said at the beginning. But the world was created in time. God exists outside of the time. So now it says in the beginning. In the beginning of what? In the beginning when God sent chronological time into the earth and began to create the, the world, that's the beginning, not God's beginning because God exists outside of time. Time is uh, serves the purposes and the plans of God. Chronological time, uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, serves the plans and purposes of God. That's a, a different teaching. But in the beginning was the word and in the beginning, the word was with God. And in the beginning, the word was God. So John 1 and 1 says, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. So what do you hear? In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the word was with him. In the beginning, when God creates the heaven and earth, the word was there. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the word was God. Then you go down John 1 and 14 and says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among them. Now the Bible is telling us the word, the Bible that I've already told you is the truth. It became flesh. Well, what does that mean? When Jesus came on the scene, he was an embodiment of the word that was in the beginning with God, was God, and was in the beginning with God. The word became flesh. So the word, the logos word of God, the word of God, the written word of God, the spoken word of God, because you do know this whole world was created by the word. I, I, this is going to be, a, I'm going to have to teach, do another teaching because we now going into some different things here. We, we've already talked about faith, but we have to underscore the value of the word. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I don't think I've ever said it that way. The value of the word word because we have a world that feels like it can shape shift and change things whenever it chooses, but the word exists outside of time. Therefore, man who exists in time has no authority to change the word. I had said that all for a reason. I need you to catch that because I, I never said it like that and I feel like running. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word was God. The word was there in the beginning before time was created. The word existed in eternity. The word is not confined to time and space. Therefore, we are creatures are beings of time and space. We have no authority because the word does not exist in our realm other than to give us instruction and direction, but we have no authority because we do not live in eternity to change the word. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Ooh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. I never said that that way. That was the Holy Ghost. So I need to let you know the value of the word. The word stands alone. The word does not need uh, man's validation. Oh, I feel a preach now. The word does not need man's affirmation. The word, the word does not even need man's agreement because the word exist in the beginning. When God was creating the heavens and the earth, the word was there. When God was creating the heavens and the earth, the word was with him. When God was creating the heavens and the earth, the word was him. So when God opened up his mouth and said, let there be light, that was the word that sent something into the earth and that it began to shoot forth light in darkness. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Jesus. Okay. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost on that one. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. Then the word became flesh. And the word alone has value and weight. Because the word was God. Therefore, you cannot separate God from his word. Oh, I hear you, Isaiah, 
my word will not return unto me void, meaning my word will not come back to me empty because I used my word to fill a earth that was void and empty. My word cannot return unto me void. My word goes into void and empty places and fills it. Hallelujah. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. John 1 and 14. The word became flesh and dwelt among them. When Jesus walked on this earth, he was a fulfillment of the word walking around on earth. Everywhere he went, the word was showing up. Everywhere he went, the word was because he was the word made flesh. First John chapter five, verse seven. I want you to hear this. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the father, the word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. I want you to hear that. There are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. So the scripture here doesn't even say the Father, the Son, who is Jesus, and the Holy Ghost. It just calls Jesus who he is, the Word, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three, so it lets you know, I'm not here to, to, to debate doc doctrine. It lets you know that there are three of them, yet they are one. These three, these three are one. These three, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. These three are one, which is why, back to what I said about God bringing into manifestation his promises, which is why I don't manifest because to manifest on my own means I have the power and actually the Holy Ghost is the power. And when I insert myself, <clears throat> it's okay, as if I'm the power, I am now removing the only power that can bring God's word into manifestation in my life. Hallelujah. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. Now I said all of that to say, the Word is the Logos Word of God, the written Word of God. And I'm going to read you a quick scripture. And I know y'all are like, She's reading a lot of scriptures, but I just want you, I'm going to read it to you in a New Living Translation so you can get a full understanding. Let me go back one. I don't have time to go into all of... Um, Let me see which of these I want to use to segue into where we, we're going. The Bible tells us um, in 1 Corinthians 13 and 8. It basically says, love never faileth, charity never faileth. Whether they be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall, shall, shall vanish away. And really what the scripture is saying here, let me, let me read it in a different way. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, there will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be still. 
where there is knowledge, it will be passed away. And so I just wanted to talk about there is a season where prophecies will no longer be necessary, but that season isn't now. And so I, I'm reading that scripture because really that scripture is talking about a time where actually none of these things we need down here will be necessary. But the reason that love transcends them all or love um, will be with us forever is because love is the only thing that we have right now that we use sometimes in our in our Christian vernacular or our Christian colloquialisms or our verbiage that um, will go to heaven. You, you don't need faith once you get to heaven. You don't need prophecies once you get to heaven. You, you don't need to be healed once you get to heaven. You don't need hope once you get to heaven. That's why it says these three, that love is the greater, because love is the only one that will go on into eternity because God is love. God and love is, are, are synonymous. And I know it sounds like, well, why are you mentioning that? Well, I want you to understand um, the fullness that we would not even know love, not even earthly love, if, there wasn't, if it was not for God. God is the reason that love exists in the earth. And so I'm going to um, prophecy even now is an extension of God loving us. I want to, I want to, I just have new people on here. So I have to give you some scriptures because I don't want to talk to people and not know that I want everybody to, to be on the same accord. Um, um, hold on. Let me give you a different scripture. Sorry, it's taken a minute. I am now reading in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 3. Because I want you to understand why the prophetic words come. I know there are new people on here. And I want to give, I want to remind you all, those of you that have been with me for a while, of the prophetic words that God has spoken. And I want to uh, tell this to some of you who are new. And I had to lay a foundation of faith because sometimes our prophecies do not come into fruition or manifestation in our life due to a lack of faith. Not because somebody was a false prophet, not because the word was not accurate, not because any of those things, but because once those words are spoken into the atmosphere, we all have an enemy of our soul who seeks to kill, steal, and destroy. And the main thing he wants to destroy is your faith. Jesus said it to Peter this way, Simon, Simon, Satan hath desired thee to sift thee as wheat, but I have prayed for thee that your faith fail thee not. So it is not, he didn't say I pray for thee that your health doesn't fail. He didn't say any of those things because anything that you lose, you can get back with faith. So he said, I pray that your faith fail you not. Anything the enemy sends against you, he is sending it so that he can uproot your faith. And so I wanted to lay a foundation of faith. I wanted to also lay a foundation of the word of God being true, the logos or the written word of God. And also to let you know, though, there is prophecy that does come forth. And for prophecy, he says, but he that prophesieth speaketh unto men for edification and exhortation and comfort. I want you to hear that again. He that prophesieth speaketh unto men for edification, exhortation, and comfort. We don't generally think about prophecies giving us comfort, but I want to read it in the Amplified. But on the other hand, the one who's prophesies speaks to people for edification, to promote their spiritual growth, and speaks words of encouragement to uphold and advise them concerning the matters of God, and speaks words of consolation to compassionately comfort them. I'm going to read it to you another translation. On the other hand, the person who prophesies, this is the CSB, speaks to people for their strengthening, their encouragement, and their consolation. Thank you all. I, I see you're 
kind words. And so tonight, when I am giving you these words, I said all of that to say, I talked to you about faith. I talked to you about the word of God. And I talked to you briefly about the love of God. Because when God sends you a word, it is an extension or an expression of his love. He is sending you a prophetic word to either edify you, to exhort you, or to comfort you. A lot of times we think of the Old Testament prophets, and I understand that the Old Testament prophets were under a different dispensation, if you will. And a lot of times we felt like they prophesied very harshly. But even in times of correction, it is a demonstration of God's love. It is mu it's much like a parent that is preventing their child from running into the street to get hit by the car. And so I may have to correct you because you keep running in the street, but I would much rather correct you to prevent you, uh, to, to teach you not to run in the street so that you will not end up being hit by a car. That's all God does with his correction. He knows the end from the beginning. Remember, he sits outside of time. He knows the, the past, the present, and the future. And because he knows the past, the present, and the future, even when he corrects us, is to prevent us from walking into something that he knows could utterly destroy us. It may be even something we want. It may be something we even desire. But he knows, like a good parent, that this is going to cause you more harm than good. Good. So let me send you a word that sometimes you may feel like, well, that wasn't a, it, that didn't encourage me or that didn't exhort me, but actually it did because it, it sustained you and it kept you alive. That's how I heard it. It kept you alive. So I want to remind you that we went back to the, to the month of, of April um, the first Friday night of April, we had Closing the Gap. And for those of you who don't know, Closing the Gap is a women's ministry that I have that during the pandemic, the men began to come too. So at this point, we still call it a, a women's ministry, but there are men there. So we'll figure that out later because we had to pivot to the needs of the people during the pandemic and we had to be obedient to the voice of God. But uh, on the first Friday night of April, April, the Lord had given me three words to give. And I'm going to give you the definitions of these words. Um, if I had my knew where my notes were, I would just pull them up. Uh, but I'm going to give them, you the definitions of these words in, in, in this order. I'm going to start with the first word that he gave me, which is recompense. The first word that he gave me was recompense. The word recompense means... To make, a min to make amends to someone for loss or harm or, su mm, sorry, to make amends to someone for loss or harm suffered. Recompense is compensation. That's the verb tense. In the noun tense, it is compensation or reward given for loss or harm suffered or an effort made. So God said, I'm sending recompense to my people. I'm making amends to you for the loss or harm you have suffered. That's recompense. The next word he gave me was reward. Reward is a thing given in recognition of one's service, effort, or achievement. So, so somebody needs recompense because God is going to make amends to you for the harm that was done to you, the loss that you suffered, the loss that you incurred. He is going to recompense you. But reward is, uh, it is given in recognition for one's service, effort, or achievement. Somebody under the sound of my voice has been faithful, and God is going to reward your faithfulness. You have been faithful despite circumstances. You have been faithful despite um, trials and tribulations that you faced, but you still were somebody that he could count on and the people around you could count on. So some of you will receive recompense for what you suffered, but 
but somebody needs to understand. I know we love to talk about God's favor, but I believe God's favorite word is faithfulness because he cares about his people being faithful and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him and somebody is getting a reward. The last one is, I'm going to say it after I pull it up, repayment. And it's really simply this. It's the action of paying back, whether it's a loan or whatever it is that you gave. Somebody, you gave something that wasn't even money, but God is going to repay you. This goes different than, than the reward for faithfulness. Uh, this is um, this is whatever you gave, he's giving it back. He's paying it back. So it, whatever it is, it, it back. It, it's like the give and it shall be given unto you. It, whatever it is, it is perhaps your time. Hey, Aletta, it is perhaps uh, financial resources, whatever it is that you gave back. But listen, it compares it to a loan. So you have to know that anytime you get a loan from a bank, when you repay it, you pay it back with interest. And that's what somebody needs to hear. The repayment is not just what you gave, but it's coming back with interest. Recompense, reward, and repayment. God gave me those three words as clear as day, and I had to have the faith to say them. Jesus, listen, I had to have the faith to say them. I had to have the faith to say them, and I have heard them. I have heard them echoed everywhere. I almost can't listen to any of the prophetic voices and one of those three words not come up. I almost can't listen anywhere, but God gave me all three of them. And I closed out that night at the beginning of April with recompense, repayment, and reward. That's actually the way I got it. Recompense, repayment, and reward. Recompense, repayment, and reward. Recompense, repayment, and reward. Whichever one of those, it may be two of those. It may be all three of those that apply to you. Recompense, repayment, and reward. Listen, I'm going to give you this brief testimony. Y'all, those of you who have been with me for a while, you know, in December, I believe it was that I told you, no, it, I told the testimony in December, but it actually happened in November. I was getting ready to near, I had a contract that was going to end in March of 2020 and uh, they wanted to uh, end the contract early. And so I complied and said, okay, we can end it early. We can terminate the contract uh, December 31st. And I just kind of said, you know, it is what it is, even though it was supposed to go longer. And I heard the Lord tell me as clear as I'm talking to you, leave nothing on the table. And I talked to some of you back then about this, and I feel led to share this now because some of us don't like conflict. And so rather than going and just asking or having a conversation that we think is going to cause conflict, rather than having a conversation that we know we should have, we just say, I'll just forfeit it. I'll forfeit it and I'll let them keep it. I'll just, for the sake of peace, I'll, I'll just let them keep it. And God said, no, leave nothing on the table. You have to grow up, learn conflict resolution skills, use the right language. It's almost like a toddler. Use your words. Don't use your anger. Don't use your emotions. Don't use your temper. Use the facts. Don't use condescending tone or voice. I don't know who needs to hear this. Use your words. Like we tell our children when they're toddlers to go back and say, no, this is what we agreed upon. And since we agreed upon this, this is what we signed a contract for. I cannot in full, uh, in full obedience to God, leave this on the table. I'm segwaying into this. This past week, we went to uh, another town and there was uh, a situation regarding, um, how do I say this without saying it? 
I'll say this. Um, this, okay, this is not, I don't want to call this a prophecy, but I want you to know this is what I hear the Lord saying. And this is what even happened for us last week. But for some of us, I hear there's a sense of urgency. We have got to tie up loose ends. And so my son had uh, one bank account. We switched bank accounts. But when we switched bank accounts, somehow money, money got lost. And we thought that a certain amount of money that he had, the previous bank kept it. And they have kept it, listen to me, I don't know who needs to hear this, since September of 2021. Last week, in the midst of tying up other loose ends, my husband said, we're going to go get that money. We're going to go back to the other bank and we're going to have a conversation with the original person that we opened that account with. Uh, and so I'm saying these words for uh, on, on purpose. So you may have a particular contact that you need to go through who, who you already have favor with. And we went back to that person and they said, oh, the money is still here. It's been suspended. It is waiting on proper identification to come and pick it up. No one mailed him a letter telling him that, or if he did, he's a college student, he didn't read it. And all this time, we thought the money was gone and it had just been suspended. I don't know who needed to hear that testimony tonight, but somebody on here listening to me, you thought it was over. Yeah, Unchained, take it, take it, yeah. I touch and agree with you tonight. It has just been suspended. It has been hanging there. And all you need is the proper identification to go and show up to make the transaction. And that what you thought you lost had just been suspended. Suspended. It's still there. You didn't lose it. Sometimes we don't have the courage or we have had to fight to get everything that we don't even just go back and ask what happened. And then we teach our children, well, I don't know what happened to it. So we just let it go. But last week, my husband said, no, 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 we're going to go get that today. And even I thought on the inside, that was like a long time ago. And somebody probably got the check anyway and cashed it. No, no, it had just been suspended until proper identification was presented to come and get it. I don't know who needed to hear that. So we talked about recompense, repayment, and reward. I don't know who needs to tie up some loose ends, who needs the gift of conflict resolution, the proper identification, and God has given you a window of favor with somebody, go back to that person. And they will do the necessary work that is needed to help you resolve that which you're trying to resolve. Now, May 1st, I remember it like it was five minutes ago. I was in East Chicago, Indiana. Not to be confused with Chicago. It's about an hour outside of Chicago, but it is in Indiana. And my husband had preached the house down. And my husband had prophesied individually to about a hundred seemed like plus people. The line seemed like it was never ending. Prophecy sometime, word of wisdom sometime, word of knowledge sometime. For those of you who are new, word of wisdom is a supernatural response to a natural problem, a supernatural answer to a natural problem. A word of knowledge is when someone meets you and God gives them a word for you that, that, you know, that, hey, things got off track for you when you were 12, when this happened to you, when that happened to you, and they could not know that except the Holy Spirit revealed them to the revealed it to them. This is not to be confused with palm reading. This is not to be confused with um, witchcraft. This is not to be confused with any of those things that use powers outside of the Holy Spirit. It's not to be confused with any of those. And then that is, there is the prophetic word, the prophetic, the the word that speaks to something. It's, it's actually, it, we've already said it. We read the scripture, exhortation, edification, and comfort. 
But as I was helping my husband, because when my husband is flowing and if God has given him particular things for women, he's going to have me standing there with him so that there is a covering with him as he is given particular or certain words to women so that he can be covered and that the word of God can go forth with safety and that she can feel comfortable sometimes depending on what the Lord has to say. So I had been there with him at the altar all day. And as we were closing, we had actually closed out church and someone came up and said, I actually felt love led to have you pray for me. And as I began to pray for her, I heard these words. Hey, Elder Scruggs, your season of delay is over. Oh, Lord, I can, I feel it the same way now as when I said it to her, because when I said it to her, he said, this is not just for her. This is for my people. Your season of delay, the season that has hindered you, that every time it seems like you're getting ready to get a breakthrough, that you're getting ready to move forward every time, and there is this delay. It keeps coming back and back and back again. It is over. It is broken in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Listen to me. I, when I get finished with this, this is going to be posted on YouTube. It's going to be Sunday night check-in for today's night date. That's how you'll find it because I've been having problems posting my lives on IG for whatever reason. Uh, and so it will be, but I need you to go back and listen to this whenever you get weak in your faith. I need you to go back. If you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, it costs you nothing. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. It is Christy Dobbins. But I talked before now, for those of you who have come on, I talked a lot on faith tonight so that by the time I brought these words to you, that your faith could be increased and that the Bible tells us, reminding you that Hebrews 4 and 2 says that, it listen, the gospel was preached to us and to them, but it did not profit them because they did not mix the word with faith. Listen, I want the gospel or the word of God tonight to be profitable in your life. And the only way to do that is to mix it with faith. It's not enough for me to say it. It's not enough for me to speak it. You're going to have to receive by faith. The Bible says it this way, that even when you pray, believe you have received E-D, meaning, but when you pray, you believe that you have already received. Because when I pray, I am coming in the finished work of Jesus. Meaning that everything that I am asking him for, if it is in accordance with his word, which is why it is important to know his word, that if I'm praying in accordance to his word, then it has already been done. And now I need to just receive it by faith. I think I saw Bishop Haber come on. God bless you, Bishop. Um, receive it by faith. Your season of delay is over. Season of delay is over. And the drought is over. That's the last word that he had given me over the few months. And I wanted to remind some of you of these words and I wanted to announce to some others of you because we have a lot of new people, the drought is over. There's an area that has not been producing the fruit it should due to a lack of rain. Not natural rain, spiritual rain. But what about the, really the spiritual rain <laughs> is the watering of the word. That's why I had to lay a foundation of the word of God, because it's not enough to have a, listen, a prophetic word is kind of like, let me just say like it's, it's in the air. It's like a, it's like a word. It is God's word. But when you, when you put the logos word with it, it gives it weight. That's why we establish the value of the word of God. So wherever the word of God shows up, the reason the scripture uses the word profitable is because the word itself adds value. 
It already comes with a value. The value of the word has already been established. It exists outside of time, in eternity. Man does not determine the value of the word. Our affirmations, whether we receive it, whether we believe it, whether we want to try it. All, all of the things that man does to things and we think that we can shape, shift it and turn it and change it into what we want it to be. The word, it doesn't bow to any of that. It's complete all by itself. So when you get the Logos word and you get the prophetic or the rhema word, which the rhema word is the word that's tailor-made. And I see some of you have been saying, oh, that one was for me. Yeah, that's your rhema word. That's not just, that's when the logos becomes personal and it is your word. That Some of you are saying, that's just, that's for me. You're talking to me. When you get your word, you're going to have to mix it with faith. And sometimes the more you hear the word, the more you hear the word, the more you believe the word. Let me say it this way. The more you hear the word, the more you believe the word. The more you believe the word, the more you receive the word. And the more you receive the word, the more you will see the word manifest in your life. Hallelujah. I didn't plan on being on this long, but I guess I haven't been on in a while. I thought I was going to be on an hour. I don't know how long I've even been on here. Um, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Hallelujah. I want to scream right now, but I'm not because tonight has been a good night in the word of God. Hallelujah. Praying for you. I think it's Bianca, single mom, praying for, praying for you. Praying that God strengthen you as a single mother. Praying for you. Praying, praying for you. Mm, hallelujah. God is good. God is faithful. Love you all. <laughs> uh, Darian said, go ahead and scream. God is good. Hey, Terry. God is good. Recompense. Repayment. Reward. Tie up all the loose ends. Leave nothing on the table. The season of delay is over. And the drought is over. Whatever, whatever you need from that, just receive it by faith. If you need all of it, just receive it by faith. Just receive it by faith. Hallelujah. Hey, Sherry. Hey, Shonda. Hey, Shalanda. I am headed back to court for custody judgment. I'm praying for a financial breakthrough for you, but I, I pray that God gives you a miracle that even money can't buy. I pray that God gives you a miracle that even money can't buy. Hallelujah. I have a few things I want to close out with, but I don't know who's knocking at my door. Let me text somebody in my family from my iPad. Because I hear somebody knocking at my front door. And I don't want to be real country and yell upstairs while I'm on live. Let 
now they're ringing the doorbell so hopefully they'll hear them give me one second pray my strength in the lord i don't normally answer doors this late i need the men i am a traditionalist in that regard That was really bad. I apologize. <laughs> Listen, they ordering pizza without me. But uh, for those of you just coming on, hey, Renee, we are closing out. And I, I would have just closed out and gone to get them, but I do want to give a few minute wrap up. This will not be on my IG because for some reason they keep flagging my lives. So I'm out of breath from running upstairs. I guess I didn't, they didn't tell me it was DoorDash. I would have just opened it. It was pizza. Um, but, so this will be on my YouTube. I am not having Closing the Gap this month. I don't, I don't think. We're considering something on the 30th. But I do think the next Closing the Gap is the first Saturday of August. I'm taking the month off. It is my birthday month. So, as you hear me say, month. So, my birthday is this Friday, July 15th. Um, I'm out of breath. I'm running up the stairs. Excuse me. Um, so, my birthday is Friday, the 15th. The next closing the gap, I believe, is August 6th. Um, but we are working on some new things coming. So, pray our strength in the Lord. You will see a couple of surveys go through my stories this week. I would love for you to respond to the type of content you would like to see. I saw several people try to come on. Thank you all. Thank you all um, to come on the live with me. I do want to do some lives that I bring people on and ask questions, let them ask questions and I interact. I just don't know how to vet that. And if I need like a third party on here with me in case it's, someone getting out of pocket or whatever. So we're trying to figure some of all of that out, but I will put some surveys in my stories. I am out of breath. I'm, I gotta get in shape. Uh, I will try to get <clears throat> um, put in my stories this week just to see the kind of content that you want. So I'll put a couple of polls in my stories. So be on the lookout for that. Um, I know I had a really high response to um, the interview style that I did. So I do want to do, um, Yes, yeah, celebrating my 31st plus, plus, plus. But anyway, I, I do want to do um, some different styles. But as you can see, I am who I am. Um, the preacher and teacher and the prophet will show up and that's okay. Um, but we do want to um, just be of service. I, I've, I've read a lot of the comments. I've read a lot of the things that have pierced your heart and the things that... <laughs> really um resonated with you all from the last the, as i said on my um thank you thank you for the birthday wishes um from the 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 wednesday night bible study and so i i do want to do some things and talk about some different things some areas i know i had a lot of response from grief <laughs> i definitely had a lot of response from the relationship um answers Yes, closing the gap will travel. Closing the gap will travel. And I will say this, pre-pandemic, closing the gap has traveled. We've only gone to about three cities, but we have traveled previously, but we will um, 
we will travel and we definitely know it we will travel more next year um i how i have it every week here i believe um some of those will not be local they will be on the road and so we we're we're going to work that out but yes closing the gap will travel um and so yeah i just want to also be sensitive to the needs of the people in definitely Atlanta is on the list for closing the gap because um, my sister's in Atlanta. So, so just organically, it's on the list. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah. So I do want to, when am I doing another class? Um, hope y'all save me a piece of pizza, slice of pizza though. Um, when am I doing another class? I'm working on that too, but I do, I do on my site have a free class for those of you who just want to go through a free class. It's not an extensive class. It's on demand of the Holy Spirit. It will give you, um, it will just help you. A, a teaching on the Holy Spirit is invaluable. And so you can go on my site now, which is simply christydobbins.com. Hit the courses tab up top and you can go right in and um, I, I hope to come to Jamaica, Marcia. But you can go right in and sign up for the free uh, free Holy Spirit class. I, it's two parts. I do plan on doing some more classes. I plan on offering some on demand. And... Okay, hold on. I'm trying to keep up with comments. Is which part on Facebook? Someone said, is that on Facebook? Which parts... Part are you asking? Is that on Facebook? My website is christydobbins.com. That's where the Holy Spirit class is for free on christydobbins.com. Hey, Marissa, we're actually closing out, but this will be posted on my YouTube for you to watch. Um, yeah. So the, a new class is coming, Elder Scruggs. I'm not. I'm gonna just tell y'all. I've had a have I've had now a huge request for everything. Mentorship is the the number one class that people are continuing to reach out to me about. So um, I am meeting with my team. We're doing um, some strategy sessions this month and just trying to meet the needs of all of God's people and find the way that I can be um, available to the maximum amount of people without it being, uh, I'm a less is more type of girl. And so I don't really deal on the numbers, even though I understand numbers. Um, I, my, I like to know that what I am doing is um, actually being, um, how do I say it? I like to see transformation in the lives of people. I'm passionate about discipleship. I'm passionate about seeing the people of God grow. I'm passionate about um, teaching the word of God to cause you to fall in love with the word for yourself and to have you addicted to the God we serve more than addicted to me. That is, that is my heart and that is my passion. I appreciate all the comments and I appreciate uh, all the kind words. And I do... Um, um, <laughs> that's one of my mentees saying, yes, she is. I, I am passionate about that. My mentees can tell you, I don't really give them advice. Oh, there's another one, Dari. I don't give them advice uh, separate from the word of God. And so, um, I, I give them advice. I, I can tell them my experience. Um, but, but the word is what works. I've, I've lived long enough to know that my opinions have changed about things. I have changed my opinions on things, or I learn more information or I get more knowledge. But when I give you the word, you can count on it. And I want you to be able to count on the word more than you can count on me. But I want you to know you can count on me because you can count on me to give you the word. And so that's kind of a synopsis of, of how I do things. And Daria, I will be reaching out to you about that strategy session. You and Monique, uh, uh, Vanessa Monique, um, so that I can meet, like I said, the, the demands and meet what you all, um, what you all are asking for. Because when we, when we surrender to this call, we are surrendering to, to, to just as Jesus did. And they passed it around the, 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 
the loaves and the fish to feed the people. That's what we have said yes to, is that he can pass us around to feed the people. That he can feed us, use us, and distribute us in the way he deems necessary. That is not always uh, even how we originally envisioned, but whichever way he deems necessary in order for his people to get what his people um, need. There is my husband. I don't know if he's coming on to tell me to get on off to come finish watching the movie with him and eat. I don't know if he had words, but I, I do want you all to check your stories this week. We are going to do those polls to see what you're looking for. What would you like to see more of? What topics you would like me to talk about more? Uh, I, I, am, um, I am going to talk about relationships. <laughs> the beautiful, he said the beautiful bed I made is amazing. Really, babe. Uh, relationships, I, I hear you. I heard the response loud and clear. Um, I'm, I'm going to close with this. I promise I'm going to close because now I feel like I'm rambling. But uh, I received so much feedback uh, that I went live on the Friday after Wednesday night. And it's on, um, it's on my YouTube because I, now my son is getting on. Okay, are they all? It's like pressure. <laughs> but I received so much feedback. Um, and I'm going to say this. This is just, this is how we're going to close. The men overwhelmingly enjoy my relationship um, advice. Even at my church in person, the men are coming up to me. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yes. For FISM. For those of you who don't know, people send their see me in FISM. It's our school of ministry at my church. And that is one reason that I know the word the way I know the word is because if you're going to teach the word, you have to know the word. But, um, and so, and, and most of the women really enjoy what I had to say about relationships but there was a handful that did not. And so um, I do want to address the concerns. I, I addressed some of them that Friday night when I went live. But I do want to expound upon and have a, um, a dialogue or a conversation around the different opinions and to help people get understanding of, of what, I, what I was saying. And so, yeah, we have all of that going on. I love y'all. It's my birthday month, uh, and I don't really always start my birthday month on July 1st. Sometimes I start my birthday month like about mm, this Wednesday, the 13th, up until August the 12th, because August the 13th is my sister's birthday. So I kind of try to let it be over when it's her birthday. So um, I think you misspelled.